Going back one to Cron.com. As Trump warns of leftist violence, a dangerous threat emerges from the right-wing boogaloo movement. As far-right, ex a far-right extremist movement born on social media and fueled by anti-government rhetoric has emerged as a real-world threat in recent weeks, with federal authorities accusing some of its adherents of allegedly working to spark violence at largely peaceful protests roiling the nation. At a time when President Donald Trump and other top U.S. officials have claimed with little evidence that leftist groups were fomenting violence, federal prosecutors have charged various supporters of a right-wing group, which calls itself the Boogaloo Boys, with crimes related to plotting a firebomb to firebomb a U.S. Forest Service facility, preparing to use explosives at a peaceful demonstration, and killing a security officer at a federal courthouse. Now, there's a lot of you know bullshit demonization in all of this. It's a very long article, and you know again, skipping ahead to the last paragraph, this is a quote from uh, Jared Maples, director of Homeland Security and Preparedness for New Jersey. Quote, these types of groups, they just take advantage of the moment and they spew some messaging and it just gains traction. The people who are doing this are taking advantage of people's fears. One of the biggest things we can do is call it out. What they're doing and the way they're calling it out, one, is obviously dishonest, but it's problematic because what they're doing is painting an inaccurate picture saying uh, that, that, that the extreme left and right should be demonized. In reality, what we see, if you accept the left-right paradigm at all, you know, you go far around enough to the right and around to the left, and they come together in the middle where people go, hey, yeah, fundamentally as human beings, we all right, want the same things as different flavors. And gee, it's the authoritarians working against the freedom of the people who we should unite against. And instead what they do is they present the left and right as these extremes and that they are the dangerous ones. And instead of saying, let's look away from the status quo to something that's safer and better, Let's look to the middle. Let's look to the status quo, to the mainstream, and huddle together uh, for comfort in the herd. Now, a couple stories that we skipped earlier, I have to skip ahead to, from StanfordAdvocate.com. This is one we didn't get to from yesterday. Police detain armed militia members after man is shot at Albuquerque protest. Protesters in Albuquerque wrapped a chain around the neck of a bronze statue and began tugging, chanting, tear it down. Shortly before sunset on Monday, the efforts to pull down a monument of Spanish conquistador Juan de Oñate suddenly stopped as four shots rang out. Now, if you read the story and get into the, the, the actual sequence of events, it's right here in the story, and you realize just how blatantly dishonest the headline is, and it's true, police detain armed militia members after a man is shot in Albuquerque protest. And what they've got here, at the, at the, even in the picture that they use in this story, reveals the dishonesty in the spin here. And it, it doesn't, it, I'm, I'm shocked, really, by how blatant they are allowing the lies to be that it's and making it so easy to read behind between the lines because what happened was that there was an incident where a shooter uh fired four shots in a questionable self-defense situation i mean i, I want to you know or, you know, get this actually right because it, they they're honest in their description in this article so uh, aside from a few small scuffles over signs near the monument, the protests have largely been peaceful, though tens of times. And by the way, this is the ridiculous one where they're, they're this is over a, a protest about a monument to Oñate, who was a 16th century despot who massacred indigenous people. Like, uh, you know, and then it's coming up now. People fight, oh, we're taking down statues. Okay. okay. Uh, as, as George Carlin would say, I leave the symbols to the symbol minded. So then a white man in a blue t-shirt, appeared to rile the crowd, according to video obtained by KOB4. People erupted in shouts, and the man took a few steps back. A masked protester swung a skateboard and struck him in the shoulder. The man backpedaled out of the crowd, but continued to exchange shouts with protesters. Some of them in the video encouraged people to follow the man and get his license plate number. Several people followed him. One tackled him to the ground. As he tried to stand back up, and three people tried to hit him again, the man in blue pulled a gun and fired four shots striking one man and scattering the crowd. According to the news, pretty clear 
use of, of, of a firearm for self-defense. And this is coming from stanfordadvocate.com, but this is from the Washington Post. And I guess they have to have a certain amount of journalist in integrity to share the story, honestly. And then they put it in a headline, and now I'm thinking, okay, this has got to be like a decoy of some kind, right? I'm sorry for the sidebar, but in the sense of the news, it, it, why are they warping and misleading with this statement, right? This, this you know, demonize the militia, right? Again, it's just feeding into the nature of the divisive rhetoric, you know, left versus right. It's the, is it the, the right-wing militia or the left-wing protesters? And in a lot of cases, what I've been seeing is it's completely contrary to the mainstream narrative. And if you just look at the interview that we did last freaking week, right? Or was it with, with right? It was uh, with Luke Wanky in Minneapolis as a boogaloo boy going out saying, look, we're, we're here to defend and support the, pro we're at least here to defend the protesters, right? To defend them, to, to, to protest. For, and we're defending them from the government, from the police. It the, the story that's happening right now in America is a more beautiful one of left and right coming together to oppose authority. And anybody who tells you otherwise is deliberately putting out a divisive message. So here we go, back to the, the physicality of what happened. In a second video that captured the moments following the shooting, the gunman sat in the middle of the, a road as the New Mexico Civil Guard militia members formed a circle around him. One man carrying a semi-automatic rifle, camouflage fatigues, and a military-style helmet kicked the handgun away from the man and stood with his foot on top of the weapon. So here the you have someone, I mean, if you want to caricature this as right and left, you have left protesters, you have a right agitator. The left protesters get violent with the right agitator. There's he in self-defense fires a shot and who comes in the militia that they're trying to portray as the right wing extremist comes in and de-escalates, disarms the person using uh, unnecessary. Well, <clears throat> it might have been in the moment justified, necessary, deadly force. I'm glad no one. I mean, if, if he could have fired a warning shot and, and had the same effect, I'm not going to second guess him. He's a man being mobbed. He's, he's armed and he's using a gun in self-defense. Legitimate, absolutely, absolutely. When when you're being tackled, if you're if you're being tackled on a hard surface, that that's deadly force. Your head hits dead head hits concrete. I mean, like we saw with the protester in in Buffalo, he hit his head. Apparently, now he has a fractured skull and and difficulty walking and significant brain damage. Right. Uh, so yeah, you're justified in using deadly force to resist that. And what happens? Isn't it great when seconds counted and the police were just minutes away that there was the New Mexico civil defense? What, what do they call themselves? The uh, New Mexico Civil Guard militia members. Yeah. So what happened? Police responded to the scene with tear gas and flashbang explosives to force the crowd back. So first they're going to escalate and then they're going to detain the wrong people. Right. And that's what they did. And so what does the headline come out to shooting? You read the headline. So go back to the headline. Police detain armed militia members after man is shot at Albuquerque protest. What's the first thing you assume? The armed militia, militia members shot, shot someone. Holy crap. OK, the next story in our linemen in, in our lineup here is another boogaloo one. Alleged Oakland Ben Lamond gunman Steve Carrillo Carrillo linked to far-right Boogaloo movement. Very confusing headline. So this is the Ben Lomond gunman named Steve Carrillo, who is from oh, the Oakland shooter, like, and then linked to, like, it's, it's, I think, a very deliberately confusing headline. And it's a deliberately confusing story because they want, they just throw out a confusing story. And, and the takeaway is bad things happen associated with people we don't want you to like. Mission accomplished. Federal prosecutors filed murder and other charges against Travis Air Force Sergeant Stephen Carrillo in the shooting death of Federal Protective Service Officer Dave Underwood, who was killed in a hail of gunfire during a night of George Floyd unrest on May 29 while he stood watch over Oakland's federal building. 
So can we dismiss this as a crazy military guy going rogue shooting other government agents? Let's find out. Carrillo was already in custody in Santa Cruz County Jail for the special enhancement murder of Santa Cruz County Sheriff Sergeant Damon Gutzwiller and the attempted murder of several other deputies in an ambush on June 6th on the mountain community of Ben Laman. So that's it. That's the headline. O Oakland Ben Laman gunman. Steve, so Ben Laman is the community in Oakland. The charges carry with them the possibility of death sentence. I think there's a, supposed to be a the there, the death sentence. The evidence linking the two crimes. By the way, when I read the news, I do a lot of correcting grammar for reporters. Yeah, It's a service to my readers or to my listeners that I read their shit for you and at least slightly unshit it. Like there's, there's a significant number of just and skimming it and taking out the crap, obviously. But uh, anyway, the evidence linking the two crimes was a white 1992 Ford cargo van. U.S. Attorney David Anderson said, the same van was used in both crimes. An AR-15 rifle discovered that the Santa Cruz crime scene was used in both shootings. Federal officials described the AR-15 as a ghost weapon, a gun self-built from parts and not purchased from a manufacturer. An armored vest also discovered in a vehicle belonging to Carrillo contained a distinct patch and slogans in what is believed to be Carrillo's blood on a vehicle carjacked during the Santa Cruz ambush linked to the suspected gunman, linked the suspected gunman to the Boogaloo movement, a right-wing extremist group that harbors a mistrust of law enforcement and government and anticipates a second American civil war referred to as the Boogaloo. Well, that's not very accurate. It's more like an internet meme come to life. But, and it's not right wing so much as it's libertarian. Of course, that's how they're going to slander it. Does it have right inclinations? Maybe. But it's not extreme right wing by any definition of left and right. But, except unless you want to say left is big government and right is small government, as simple as that. But even then, the terms kind of break down irrelevance, and you can see that what they're doing is demonizing. And we have an interesting explanation here. The term comes from a 1984 cult classic movie, Break Into Electric Boogaloo, a phrase which is used to signify parody when appended to a topic. The Boogaloo movement's anticipation of a second civil war in the U.S. generated the phrase Civil War II Electric Boogaloo, which means that it's a parody. Like, do you not, like, do they not realize this? Now, if it's a parody come to life in a in a bad way, that's a different story. Now, is it, you know, what what is what is the link here? You know, what did they say here? An armored vest, distinct patch, and slogans linking to the. But what is do they, do they do they actually say so? Um, stop the duopoly. It looks like it's in the photo of, of this blood, alleged alleged blood. Like, this is some other level of insanity. If this is really what this is and not just what they're insinuating, this is the story of the year, bigger than than anything except maybe Corona or George Floyd as a whole. But like that this, so I can't read the top part of this in the blood. I can read the bottom there says stop the duopoly. That's a very libertarian phrase that we get from our friend Bill Weld, our friends Bill Weld and Gary Johnson actually. So. You know, skipping ahead here, there's, you know, all this stuff about the procedure and the criminal process, but there's no examination or very little, I, I mean, I suppose insufficient to really help me understand who this person is, what their motivations are that you think would, would be part of the story. Bennett said, or what the links are. Bennett said evidence developed in the case of communication between Carrillo and others talking about using the George Floyd demonstration planned for Oakland that night as a cover to kill Underwood and wound his partner. We believe, as he said, quote, we believe Carrillo and Justice chose the state because of the planned protests in Oakland. It provided them to target multiple law enforcement personnel to and to avoid apprehension due to the large crowds attending the demonstrations. As described in detail in the complaint, we believe Justice drove the white van. So, like, this is, I mean, it's a really strange story. I don't see anything else here. And, and I read this whole story earlier, you know, trying to figure this out. Like, and there's this weird connection with the Air Force. All right. And this gets to suggesting, like, some kind of crazy MK Ultra kind of shit. 
And I think that's what, again, deliberately making things confusing and misleading. Korea was a Phoenix Raven team leader at Travis Air Force Base, having completed a rigorous two-week, 12-hour day course at McGuire that, quote, covers cross-cultural awareness, legal considerations, embassy operations, explosive ordinance awareness, and more. As the Air Force release said, while Raven apprentices are using these techniques, they are also exposed to more than 70 use of force scenarios. And I, I, I don't want, I mean, I, do I want to turn into the Steve Carrillo investigation guy? Or, you know, what is Phoenix Raven team leader? What is the Phoenix Raven conspiracy? Is this some MK Ultra thing? Is this a rope? Like, this is an Air Force sergeant allegedly murdering government officials in Oakland. And you know, is the mainstream media all over? The, no, like, and I'm, I'm reading this from, from CBS Local. It's a local story. Why is this not going international? For some reason, the media doesn't want the story. Remember, the media wanted the George Floyd story to get out. They wanted the protests and rights. They want, like, and, and the irony, oh, look. People go out to protest police brutality and police with, respond with oh, more brutality. Predictable problem, response, solution. Like, yeah, distraction, all of this. They could have stopped this. They could have made this a moment of, oh, yeah, the protests were relatively peaceful. Or something. They didn't. The authorities let that happen. Donald Trump, and I'm just using this as an example because by saying this, you see that all of these other layers of government could have intervened and prevented this from happening. Donald Trump could have gotten out and said, I have a message to America's law enforcement. Be peaceful. Protect the protesters. Use minimal force. If you stick to those guidelines and get out there with love and respect for the First Amendment and freedom of speech, you will be celebrated. Those who don't will be prosecuted. Right? He didn't say that. Did he say anything like that? No, not, nothing. I know. Nothing. Did and any state governor any federal law enforcement fbi cia goomba or the fbi i know you're not cia but all the other federal law enforcement agencies they could have reached out created national guidelines police unions organizations and said what are they doing now they're cheering they're letting this happen you've seen these incidents where you know like the, the, the cops who pushed the guy in buffalo they get released from, from jail or they, no, it wasn't jail. They didn't get jailed. They went to some court hearing and they come out and there's huge crowd of off-duty cops. Same thing, multiple incidents like that where they're sell, they're defending the cops doing the brutality and they're doing it openly and brazenly. The powers that be are letting that happen. They want that division. They want that divisiveness. And it makes you wonder, like with a story like this, I, I'm going to be following up on this. Steve Carrillo and the Boogaloo connection conspiracy. Like, I, I do want to follow up on this just to, I, I want to be careful, like, not to get sucked down the rabbit hole on this one. But, whoo, Air Force sergeant murdering a Santa Cruz County Sheriff sergeant? Like, that should be international headlines. U.S. Air Force sergeant murders Santa Cruz County Sheriff's sergeant. Yeah. Talk about an underreported story. To the only extent that they're reporting it, they're going to, oh, that's a crazy boogaloo thing. I doubt it. There's going to be a lot more to this story. Thank <laughs> you.